G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video channel. I want to teach you beginners and advanced beginners how to paint beautiful eye-catching art in acrylic. Before I get started, I want to put the size on the canvas there, and I'll also get the colours that I'm going to use in this video running up the screen. And you can get yourself set up, watch the video a couple of times, and work out what you want to do. Now this is a video just to show you what you can do. You don't have to do everything exact or have the exact colours. Some beginners do feel they've got to have everything the exact. Just remember, it's your journey, and it's the way you create it and want it to happen to make you smile, alright? So get on over here, and let's get right into it. Now I've got some soft body titanium white out of the bottle. It's like student paint. It's just a soft body and I want to mix up my retarder to slow the drying time down of this soft bodied flow white. And it's going to mix with this retarder and see what's happening. This will take longer to dry and it's going to give me time to blend my skies like oil paints do when you see the oil artist. Because sometimes acrylic can be chalky and dry and draggy. So up here, I've, you, you might see a slight mountain outlay there. I've got it, normally I don't like them coming off the canvas there, but this is the background because I'm going to have some stuff sweeping in front of it coming up off the canvas. So I want to get the sky footprint mapped on with this soft body titanium white with the retarder in it, just so as I can get a nice kind of realistic sky. I like to do, if anything, realistic looking skies because they just look fantastic in your painting. Once you've got that on there, as usual, I stroke it with the tip of the brush left and right like a pure gentleman and get all the big lumps and bumps out of there ready to put the sky colours in there. Now back down on the palette, I'm going to go for French Ultramarine this time. I also want to get a bit of uh, grey on the palette. This is to get my realistic sky colours I suppose and some uh, quinacridone magenta. I normally label it as the colours going up as just magenta. So I'm going to use this and the colour that's on the canvas is going to lighten it as well because you don't want a big bright blue sky that colour. I call that a cartoon look. And if you're going for a realistic sky colour you don't want a cartoon look. So now I'm going to just crisscross this into the tooth of the canvas right across the top. Get a little bit more on the brush bring it across so I've got the same value at the top of my canvas. All right, now what I want to do is crisscross it and bring it down to the horizon line, getting it pushed into the canvas. I'm not worried how it's looking at the moment. I'm getting the paint incorporated on the footprint of the canvas where I want the sky to be. Then I'll come to the tip of my putter on a brush again and stroke it left and right to get a nice even sky. Watch this, start at the top, now I know the paint's pushed everywhere. I'm not going to try and labour my way of trying to get paint here and there and get big push marks everywhere. I've controlled what I want the paint to do. Now before I get started, I want to get a little bit of the magenta and just start tinting and changing the colour of the grey here. Not too much, it's very strong, just little tiny bits as you go. Your first time here, comment below and let me know how you found my channel. Now in general, to try and get a realistic sky, a beginner can do this. You can do it, okay? I've mixed the sky, I've showed you what I've done. Now with this colour, we'll just crisscross this across the bottom of the sky area. Crisscrossing it in, you can. I've done it different ways, but in this video, I'm doing it this way. Now, I want to stroke it and I want that to evaporate. And the way to do that is I'm going to get infinity X strokes and push it up into that blue just so as I can fade it into that blue. When we put clouds on here, it gives it a realistic vibe and it just turns your sky into absolute bullshit. Now my number one go-to brush for incorporating clouds is just a, a fan brush, it's a hog bristle to be precise, and I use the white paint out of the tube. I don't use this soft bodied stuff for the paint, this has got more body thickness and grunt. So I'm just going to simply load up my fan brush and chisel it like a ribbon, look at that, so as i got no big ugly blub, blobs and bumps on there. Now I want to add some clouds, so what I'll do is I'll add a lot of ones like this, leaving lots of blue. So I'm starting in the blue first, I'm not going here and there or in the grey. And I'll turn my brush around now, because see what's on my brush? 
there's blue paint there. So now I'm going to the other side and I'm going to start coming into the grey. Magenta colour. So I'm not bringing too much blue into here. Grab yourself a blending brush, hit it and I'm going to blend it into the middle. Hit it and blend it into the middle. Just so as you can see those bright dollops, you get this formation of clouds in the sky. I'm sure you've all seen them. I know I see them a lot here in Perth, Western Australia. We get some beautiful skies here actually, we're quite blessed. I've been in Hong Kong and it's, you struggle to find a beautiful sky every day of the year over there, but it's just the way it is. See, I'm hitting it and flicking it into the middle of the painting, leaving the vibrancy, if anything, on the seven o'clock position and fading it away to the one o'clock position. Now look at me brush, I've got a bit of crap on there. So I just use the Chuck's Kitchen Wipe and I'll wipe that away just so as I can have an empty blending brush all the time because a blending brush you do not want full of paint otherwise you're going to be transferring paint everywhere and it's going to be frustrating you. Now I've done a bit of analysing I just want something ticked in there and I want to start getting some longer ones now just sort of incorporated over this side of the sky just participating out into nothing there we go I'll put my brush down and quickly blend. I don't have to quickly blend it. You can see that sky colour. Hopefully you can. It's still wet. That retard has left it wet. Stopped it from drying. Take your time. It's important to take your time. And then just to finalise the clouds, wherever my mountain is, I might try and get something just overhead, a bit bigger over here. And what I want to do is try and create a window if I can, just like that. I'll show you what I mean about a window. I'll get this tail and kind of drag it that way and then I want to blend the top up. Blend it. Look at all the turmoil and beautiful cloud nonsense happening there. It's wonderful. And then that bottom piece, I want to keep the top of it kind of sharp, drag it along and kind of pull that down into the atmosphere here and what I've done I love creating these little openings in the sky just in this corner of the clouds here I want to grab some other light hitting there so I'm going to grab a little bit more titanium white but I want to tint it with this vibe here not too much now and what I want to do is try and get some of this in a lot of these clouds here just underneath a lot of it here, tickling the bottoms where some light's coming up, hitting it all. I'm just using the corner of my fan brush. I'm just gonna grab any, like look at this little flat brush, just to kiss that down, use patting it down into that cloud there. Okay, what I wanna to do to finish it now is I wanna get a bit of bright white in this area here and just it's my yumminess everyone who's familiar with my channel knows about my yumminess and I want to get a bit of bright yumminess just coming across this part of the sky I'm using the fan brush I'm using the corner I'm kind of crisscrossing it as well making some vibrant lusters of yumminess and I also while I got it want to get some kind of yumminess with this guy over here as well just putting it in there I'll just use this little flat brush to blend some of that down Got to wipe constantly. If you feel you're doing what I'm doing but it's not working for you, make sure you're doing everything. Are you wiping your brush? Have you got a good quality canvas? Are you using decent quality paints? Practice with all the cheap stuff but when you know you're gonna continue your journey, get the good stuff and you can paint good stuff. Now what I want to do is mix up a distant green mountainside there. I'll get uh, maybe this magenta 
I'm just going to use a brush and brush mix it and the French ultramarine blue and we'll get some kind of distant purple going there. I'm going to add a bit of that craft white just over here just to see. A bit more red. Now I want me horizon probably in the middle of this thing here like that and I've put a bit of water with that paint this mountain's going to come to about I don't want it in the middle I want it to this side here so I'm going to come to the side here and just kind of bring it down about there like that and then this side here give it a bit of a table and then come down there like that so I can see me sky now I just want to block it in I'm using a brush I don't mind when you do this with a flat brush you could ruin it so I'm using a brush I don't mind if it gets a bit hurt there we go now I'm just pulling a little bit of the yellow ochre with what's in the brush over this side of the pile just to get an idea of the difference in value very easy to do give me a comment below tell me where you're from I want some of this I haven't dried it but you can dry it I'll see if I can get away with it I want to create different slopes highs and lows within this distant mountain and the lights hitting that This is distance, but it's, look at our sky. We're getting a decent bullshit looking sky and we want a decent bullshit mountain. We don't want just something flat and black painted in there or gray. You want to be able to learn in your journey what things you can do. And you can see, I'm looking in there now, I could see a lot of nakedness here. So let's start fixing that up, making it look a bit real. All that first colour green, you don't want to destroy that. You do not want to destroy that. And I want something just radiating around these valleys and gullies here. Just creating some kind of light hitting the tops there. You can see what that done. Look at this here. Now this is real Len Hen vibe, this. Check Len Hen out if you haven't already. Len Hen is Australian artist. And if you go off, and if you find him, just tell him Ian Harris sent you there. He does some wickedly wicked, simple, easy, technical stuff as well for beginners. Now you can see what's happening. The light is hitting all this, making it a nice distant mountain. I'm just going to grab some of the French and magenta. And I want to get a darker value of that that I mapped this mountain in with so as I can add some depth in there. And I'm going to look, I'm going to try and see if this will work because you can see a bit of very lightly push in those darks. That underpainting colour where you can see the white through it, I'm disguising that. But, and also I'm creating a valley in this hillside. And then I'll come back with the detail colour just to sink it back a little bit. Now I'm once again getting the darker khaki colour and that colour I just put on, I'm going to gently sit it down to get rid of the, the, the blobbiness of it all. Leaving it there but just sitting it down. I'll look in my monitor. Okay, I want something, where was that about here? Yes, I want something coming back here. And like I said, you're going backwards and forwards, fine tuning it, getting a couple of good strokes done. The yellow green more into it. I'm just gonna finish it off now with highlighting it with that. 
see where you get dark pockets. Where can I find a dark? I could see one right there. I want to try and just lace it over, lace it over a little bit. Creating that valley again. There we go, I'm looking here. I can see light wanting to hit the top of this ridge here. But leaving a lot of spaces in between your brush strokes so as they're not blobbing onto the canvas they're sitting sharply on top of the canvas and all those paints there and the good thing about it like i said you've dried it your paint is not going to mud up I just want to show you as well, this bit might get covered up, but let's just say you pull some flatness out here. It's like a, there's a bit of flat field out there in the mountain. To make that look real, you need the darks in there. So I'm just going to simply pick up the dark colour and around one edge of it, darken it like so, onto that. You've got to leave those dark shadows you just put there. Otherwise it won't give you the illusion. It'll look floaty and it'll look like something's a bit wrong. I'll tell you what, this fly's having fun with me today. I've put a little bit of white in that yellow ochre colour that I've been pulling on my brush just so as we can see what I've done here. Look at that, the light's hitting. Very small. See the top here, look. I've stepped back, I could see light hitting there. I'm stepping back, I could see a little bit of light probably just hitting here. I'm just being fanatic now. Calm down. All right, that'll do. But you can see how this now just looks like a little grass field where sheep might graze or something. What I'm going to do to quickly speed up the process is mix up with that French ultramarine and that magenta again and I just want to quickly block in the lower half so we've got the darker values there already in our reflection so I'll just quickly get this on can see the different values as I'm mixing as I go, but that's okay, it's under painting. Okay, that can be dried and then we can finish the rest of this painting off. Now this colour here, before we get too far, I just want to incorporate that reflection down here. So I still have that colour there, which I've been spraying water on, and it's still there, so I'll grab that and I want about here. So what I'm gonna do is just put it on where it's roughly meant to be and then give it a, a draggy pull. Put it on, follow me mountain, and give it a draggy pull. I'll use the side of it. I don't want it looking a bit weird. I want it to try and look as right as possible. Pull it down, pull it down. Let, it, let this bottom half be scratched and combed There we go, then all this can be just... See, I've got darkness there, so keep the dark, this darkness, there's that darkness. Not all of it's gonna be seen, because we're gonna have foreground as well. So we've pretty much done that. Now I wanna grab the lighter value of that. So we're gonna make that green again. Oh, no, I won't make it again. I've got it there. I'll just add the yellow ochre into it. What am I doing? 
how to dry and I want to try and get the brighter colors just scratched in now just like so here and there just putting it on and pulling down getting that combed look about it hide any bits that you don't like and I'm going to grab the little bit of white that I added into it before to create that little field vibe thing we got going out there. Just so we get the same values reflecting, it just looks more appealing. About here we've just got some bits and bobs of light pulling down there. Maybe a little bit over there. And that's it. Okay, now I've got my forest green and I want to get some of the yellow oxide within that just to give me this vibe that I'm looking for. Oh yeah, that's nice, beautiful. I want to try and get these in the distance coming off the painting, but coming down. So see these trees here, you just want to sit that down with this I'll get it on there first. Now I'm grabbing a bigger flat brush just to get these reflections down. They don't have to be as detailed as that. So I've added a little bit more water and I want to get that vibe now. So I just want to pretty much stamp it on and pull it in front where I feel. Come across, stamp it on and then pull it down. And cover all that white up from the top. This is how simple it is to do your reflections in the water from the top when your paint's not wet and stroke it. Stroke it. Now down here I've grabbed a bit of the um, magenta and put into that green. Okay, I'll link it up a bit just so as we can get the tops of those trees dark because they've got to be dark to sit back for the stuff in front that's going to come in front. I'm looking at them and they're just not dark enough so there we go. I'm going to just get the tops of them a bit more darker. Pulling down. Now that colour that I've mixed, I'm going to get a bit of the yellow, cadmium yellow. And I just want to come over here with it. Not everywhere. Now this colour that we mixed here, I'm using the flat brush. Probe your amount of water for transferring and we want to put the forward trees on. Now I'm simply going to grab me dark green, which is the forest green and that magenta again, on my little, this is my shrub brush okay I can get patterns like that everything that's on the canvas is um, the base background color I want to get the depth of my trees now and then highlight this to bring these little bad boys home so simply work out I want to start putting something 
about here. I'm coming down into that yellow and I'm fading that down into the water. Because at the moment it looks all like scribble. And we want to convert that scribble into decent realistic looking stuff. So we need all these darks here. Now I'm grabbing the forest green again with the yellow oxide. Making a very bright khaki green, getting rid of all that off my brush. And now I want to grab some of the cadmium yellow and really get a bright vibe of this going. So what I want to do now is find those bits That'll do for that one, because he's behind. I want to put this one right in front. There's my horizon there. So all this now is just going to be a bit iffity effity down there like that. Now that first one was like the first pancake you cook. It was always a bit iffity effity. We'll try and get these a bit more looking gorgeous. Leaving some darks there. They're pretty much like a tall pencil pine. And some of these are going to be bright and some are not. Okay, now we're just going to highlight. So this paint that we just used, we want to get this really over here next to this yellow. If I can get rid of that. Grab this cadmium yellow light and we want to make the brightest yellow green. I want mainly some in the front light, watch this. I'm just going to create one right here. And then I'll have a look and I'll see if it's too yellow. I'm feeling it is a little bit too yellow. As hairy as you can get these. My brush is not spayed out enough. One luscious one right here. Where's the horizon? I've already passed the horizon. I'm gonna wet me script line and I've got some burned umber here. Find some front trees and give them a what I might do is I'll do it in a double take. I'll do the darker colour and highlight it with a bit of the, the lighter colour just to get more control. There 
We're just sitting in the dark. Now I'm just going to wiggle some of the grey into it, just to get some light on those. Now we've done this, we're gonna separate that to the water with our mist. Put these trees, or you put your own type of tree you want, but we're putting these subjects within. So grab yourself a mixing brush that you can mix well with, and I want to grab the light green, which is over here. Can you see that? I'm gonna grab some of that yellowy green, not too much of it though, and I just wanna get a white mist going, but I want it that color. There we go, it's got a tint of the greeny yellow in it, okay? And like I've got my horizon line pretty much there, okay, boom. So what I wanna do is quickly sit back everything here up to about there. Easy does it, make sure your painting is pretty dry for this. I'll get that pretty much filtering up, coming above here, above the sky there. I wanna, where's my horizon? Somewhere about there. I want it concentrated. And then I'll start fairing out to nothing. So we'll get the middle concentrated. Get rid of those ugly lines there and then just start flaring it out. Coming all the way along, fading away to there, coming back here and coming more concentrated, working the top and bottom to get the reflections and the stuff sitting on the water. What I might do, that's a small brush, I'm just I'm going to another one here. So where's a clean putter on a brush? There we go. Watch this. Get that in there. Bigger brush I can... Oh yeah. I'll come out here and... Yeah, look at that. I've got more control. Wow, these putter on a brushes, they are great. Because when we put the foreground in, it's going to set this back. This bit here now. Oh, I love it, love it. This brush is working fantastic for mist. I'm grabbing some glaze just before I put my putter on a brush down. I want to grab some glaze in that dirty brush. See, look at the yellow that just came out in it. I want to sink. Put a surface on that water. There we go. Nothing too heavy, that's it. Down here, I'm going to just spray there. Grab the rest of me paint on me, put her on a brush. Is it dark enough? If it's not, I'll add a bit of dark colours to it, just so as I can get my foreground blocked in, using my put her on a brush. And I want to come across, push that fog down there, coming across. Block it in 
and then dry it. I'm going to grab the forest green and the cad yellow and make my own yellow green with me putter on a brush. I'm going to come from here and just start getting over the top of that dark colour, don't have that dark colour at the top, and just come across Just getting a little bit of that and mixing it into some cadmium yellow to get a highlighted version. And I just want to highlight this now a little bit more. I'm just going to do this. Give it a real field, like it's in the field. That's working. Yeah, I like that. That was too easy, wasn't it, eh? I could just get something out here. Just to simply put some rocks in, I'm grabbing a I was going to use a knife, but I'd rather use a brush. Work out where you want some rocks. I want something about here, so just paint your rock in. Just like so, that'll do. Lock it in all black. Everything needs to be dry. We'll put something here. So what I'll do is I'll get the height of the rock. Now you don't want to do them flat like that, because it ruins the perspective. You've got to give the rock because it's closer to you, you can see not only the sides of it, but you can see the tops of it. So something like that. Something a bit weird there. About here. dry that but before you dry it these ones out here just grab your brush and pull some shadow vibe just into the grass there just something like that to emulate shadowism if that's a word just sits them in the ground a bit now using the same brush and some burnt sienna, I'm just going to get some of this scratchy datchy on my brush just so as I can hit those rocks. Okay, so grabbing the burnt sienna, I want to create the rock. But see where the rock's on the ground? I don't want the colour down there, otherwise it'll ruin the illusion that it's sitting on the ground just like that you want it scratchy and nature looking I'm just doing it this way on every rock because in, in this area they got the same sort of rock I'm just creating I want to feel I can get out of each blob that I've put there, see? <laughs> now, I don't know if I said I dried it, but I did dry it. There's a big blobby bit there. And then what I want to do is just simply highlight this colour. So I'm grabbing the burnt sienna and I've found some cadmium yellow and I'm highlighting it with that. Everything's had a dry and I want to just 
gingerly now do bits of this. Creating your rocks how you want them to look. Let's have a look. Oh, that one looks a bit uh, uniform, doesn't it? So I don't want that to happen. Just like that. Wiggle yourself. Act nervous. That's better. Something here. Act nervous. There we go. Try a little bit of white in that over here, not too much. And just certain bits you want to highlight with this. So I'm just going to do the, let's say the 10 o'clock position as where the light's hitting or the 10 o'clock position of it all. Very lightly. If you overdo it, you'll see that you've overdone it. Now just to finish it off, I'm just putting some bits of grass here and there in front of bits and bobs of it all. I want to put a chunk of grass right in front of that, just here, a big, big blob of it with some highlighting in it, so it's going to stand out. I'll even put a bit of white with it if I have to. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Grass grows in between rocks and in rocks and behind rocks. As you can see, it's just adding more charisma to your art. Something in front of that one. Just putting bits here and there. We've got my autograph around the little bottom corner here. Okay, I've signed that. Let's whack a frame on it and see how she looks. There you go, that's not too shabby, is it? We've got a hillside mountain lake misty lake kind of vibe going on there with a decent looking sky and i know you can do it well that was interesting what a lot of fun that was if you liked what you just saw today you tell your friends but if you don't you tell everybody also check out this other video of mine goodbye good luck and good on you